What's up, Cal Gang? All right, so we have a physics problem on our hand. All right, so just before it is struck by a racket, a tennis ball, well, you know, it gets hit by a racket, and it tells us the velocity of the tennis ball before, and it tells us the force that the tennis racket uses, and it has certain components basically to it. So part A wants us to find um, the X component of the impulse, and it also wants us to find the Y component of the impulse. So let's go ahead and get that started. All right, so impulse is equal to, you know, force times distance, or not, <laughs> Not force times distance. Force times change in time, of course. I don't know why I said that. Okay, and these are two vectors, basically. And what that means is we can find two components of it. Okay, so J, impulse. So what does it give us? So we want to find this impulse. So we want to find, you know, here we have X, and this is Y. Uh, and then, so it's equal to, so it gives us force components, right? So negative 380. And then what's the y? 110. And then it also gives us uh, the time that it's in contact, right? It's your three milliseconds, so three divided by 1,000, which is three milliseconds, or three seconds. Okay, and if you've never seen this component form before, basically this is the same as negative 300, or negative 380 i hat plus 110j. This is the same thing as that. It's just these, these pointy things make it a vector. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate this. So basically all you have to do is multiply this in there and then you'll get, so basically like j, which is this, is equal to two. Um, so basically just, you know, adding these in or multiplying them in, so it's negative 1.14, 0 0.33. That gets distributed to both of those. Okay, so that is part A and B. So part A is just this number. This is the, the x component of the impulse and this is the y component of the impulse. So let's go ahead and move on to part B, which is asking us, uh, find the velocity at the end. Okay, so to do this, we're gonna need another formula. So we're gonna move, we're gonna start at this formula and we're gonna progress our way down. If you watch my last video, you're gonna see this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand that force. So impulse is equal to force times change in time, but force is equal to mass times acceleration, right? Acceleration is the vector now. But then you can say impulse is equal to mass and then acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. But then if you multiply by the change in time there, these are gonna cancel out and you're just gonna end up with impulse is equal to mass times change in velocity. Oops. All right, okay, so this is something we can do because we're trying to find velocity, right? We're trying to find the components of velocity. This is a, this is a vector basically. So let's go ahead and write out what we know. So we got this, so we're gonna say negative 1.14 0.033 is equal to the mass. Um, we need to find the mass. What we have now is the newtons, right? It gives us, uh, let's just do a little bit of side work. So it's 0.5, how many? 0.560 newtons. So, you know, force is equal to mass times acceleration. We're trying to find mass. So force divided by acceleration is equal to mass. So this is the force due to gravity. So it's 0.56 divided by 9.81 is equal to the mass. That mass is pretty close to the number, where is this? 0 0.0571, okay. So we can go ahead and put that number over here for the mass, 0 0.0571. And then another vector, which is change in velocity, which if you wanted to change the velocity, you could say velocity final uh, minus velocity initial and then same thing, velocity final minus velocity initial, but these are the x components, and these are the y components. So that's what all these little subscripts mean. So this is the velocity final with respect to x, velocity initial with respect to x, velocity final with respect to y, velocity initial with respect to, uh, with respect to y, yes. Okay, let's distribute, right? Okay, what we can actually do is we can divide this from both sides, and you'll end up with something pretty nice. Okay. Um, Yes, I did do that. So dividing by this number from this, from both of these factors, you're going to get negative 19.95 and then 5.79 is equal to, and then, so it'll be velocity final with respect to x, but we have velocity initial with respect to x, which is 20, right? 20. And then here you go, velocity final with respect to y minus velocity initial with respect to x, which is negative 4, so this will make it a positive 4. Okay, then we, what we can do 
is it's looking for, like if you wanna just compare this X to this X, all you have to do is combine, like show them together, right? So it'll be um, negative 19.95 is equal to velocity if I know the X minus 20. Of course, you add that 20 to the other side, and you're getting 0 0.05 is equal to the velocity final of x. So yeah, that's that's x right there. That's meters a second, of course. Okay, let's do the other one. So what you'll get is 5.79 is equal to the velocity final with respect to y plus 4. Subtract the 4 from that side, you're going to get 1.79 is equal to the velocity final of y. And that's all at once, right? Uh, yeah, that's all at once. So yeah, uh, and the answer it's, it simplifies this to 1.8 uh, with just one. So 1.8, whatever. Yeah, so that's how you solve this problem. Um, basically, just uh, learn how to rearrange this impulse formula, and uh, yeah, you're you're set. Good for good for this unit, basically. Yeah. So uh, good luck on your physics homework, guys.